get as much as you can as fast as you can. Now, there are those that would say that that is living. But according to Christ, real living is all about laying down our lives and following Him. Get on the road to reality next. How would you be described as a worldly Christian or as a world Christian? Today on the road to reality, K.P. O'Hannon will explain the difference between the two. Welcome once again to the radio ministry from Gospel for Asia. Judging by the way people live, it's not hard to see that most people prefer a brand of Christianity that well, demands very little, if anything, from them. However, true Christianity, as we'll see today, is about giving up everything, including our lives. Here now to encourage us to move away from self-centered living and toward a life that is pleasing to God is Brother K.P. I prayed and asked the Lord what I must speak on his behalf today. And I sense very deeply what the Lord will have me to say to you. And so on behalf of my king and the kingdom, as my brothers and sisters, I speak to you what the Lord placed upon my heart. One of my greatest concerns for the body of Christ, especially in North America, it is that we will become doers of what the Lord tells us. One year I traveled over 200,000 air miles speaking to God's people in this nation. At the end of that time, I was fairly discouraged in myself and time to seek the Lord's face also. The reason for the discouragement was I saw a nation with abundance of opportunity information, incredible amount of blessing. Yet, as we read of the people of Israel, they feared the Lord and served idols. What a paradox. I love you dearly, and I care about you very much, knowing that in a few years, none of us are going to be here. We are going to see our Lord face to face, and for eternity we will have time to look back and reflect over the time we spent on planet Earth. So I am concerned that we walk with him today, knowing that nothing here is permanent, but something out there, eternity is the real thing. Let me read a few verses to you from the Word of God, beginning with the portion in First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judged justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Then in um, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Second Peter 3.10 But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. The day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire 
and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. Then the next page, 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Just one more verse. Right in the middle of your Bible, Psalms. 103, verse 15 and 16. For several months, I don't think there's a day go by when I don't think about this verse or talk to somebody when I talk on the telephone or whatever. Very meaningful words to me. Psalm 103, verse 15 and 16. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourisheth like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it, and it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. On August 27, 1990, I was supposed to be in South Korea to speak at a mission conference, but I didn't make it. The reason was, on the way, I stopped in India. And I learned that uh, my mother was taken ill, and she was 84, and admitted in the hospital. So that week, I will go every day morning and afternoon and evening and sit by her side and read Bible verses and of course by the time I read half of the verse she will recite the rest of it. So I didn't have a chance to tell her anything new. So that particular night, the 26th, late night I went home and the following morning about 6 o'clock I got a telephone call from my brother and he said, our mother passed away. I was very close to my mother because for three and a half years she prayed every Friday fasting that one of her sons would become a missionary. And I'm the youngest in the family. And it was her commitment and prayers the Lord answered in calling me the least and the last one to serve him. And according to our customs, when the funeral service takes place, the youngest one is supposed to be the one that goes to the graveside and having the coffin open, pull the veil over the face of the mother. So I was to do that. And my brother was, oldest brother was on the other end of the coffin. Large number of people there the saddest day of my life. And as I looked into the face of my mother for the last time, for now, I took the veil and I was about to put it over her face and I stopped for just a split second and I realized something was missing. Her earring. I never ever saw my mother without her earring and that was gone. Then I remember the gold chain that she wore with the symbol of the marriage that took place between her and my father and her wedding ring. None of those things. It's all missing. And I put the veil over and with my tears and I walked away. And the next day I was to leave home to come back to the United States because I didn't had to go on to South Korea. And, and my brother said, before you leave, you may want to know how much money there is left in our mother's account. And I imagined a whole bunch because all her six sons would give her money and she must have saved it up all this. And I thought, well, yeah, I'd like to know. I'll get my share. Since my father died in 1974, my oldest brother becomes the head of the family. That's how it works. 
So he called all his younger brothers, and I was the least and the last. And and he said, um, there is about two and a half dollars or three dollars left in the bank, Indian money. That much. I said, what? He said, yeah, I am surprised too. Then he pulled out a, a bunch of little scribbled papers that my mother had stuck under her pillow in a plastic bag. And he pulled it out, the record of years that she was sending her money privately without telling anyone to support Bible school students, missionaries in different parts of North India. And then my brother said, oh, one more thing. She left her note, her desire, saying that when she is dead, her earring, her wedding ring, and her gold chain should be sold and give it to print the gospel tracts to reach the lost souls. But I thought about my mother last night and thought about her today. And I think about her now in terms of what is she thinking looking back over the 84 years she spent on planet Earth. I was sometimes surprised, a couple of times I squabbled with my mother. I really did. When I would go back to India and see her, what is wrong with you? Can't you get some better clothes? I mean, look at other mothers. I want to be proud of you. I mean, you have the money. Why don't you do it? Don't we give you enough? And I reply, nothing. Won't say a word. And I realize now how she lived her life. And I learned one more time a lesson what it means to walk with the Lord day by day, living with reality. My brothers and sisters, this is not peacetime. This is war. If your house is on fire, would you sit and watch your favorite television program? Read the news magazine came, what the news is, what's going on? Would you think about a bunch of normal things you are planning to do? No, sir. You will make a door through a concrete wall. Because the house is on fire. You are not going to look for your clothes. You are going to look for your little children sleeping somewhere, maybe. This is urgent, desperate hour, like God told Lord. Don't look back. Flee for your life. This is urgent hour. And I think one of the saddest things about the body of Christ, we don't realize it. And you know what? When Peter wrote the scripture portions, it is not yesterday, a bunch of time, long time ago, he says, the day of the Lord, it's going to come like a thief and heavens will melt and disappear. All that we have on earth, the house, the car, the clothes, the diamond rings and the jewelry and the car, I mean... Everything that you have and people live for, it's all going to be burned up and be gone in a split second. It'll be gone. Seeing, knowing this is going to be so. What kind of people you ought to be like? You must be live a holy life. Your life must be such it will speed up. It will hasten the coming of Time is short, and the need for holy living is great. Today on the road to reality, we're being reminded of what really matters in life. You know, it's so easy to get off track and distracted from that, isn't it? K.P. Yohannan will return in just a moment with more. Brother K.P. has written quite a number of books, one of them being Revolution in World Missions. Now, just as we're encouraged in today's message to move away from self-centeredness, to be more eternally minded, this book will challenge you with more of the same. It's our free gift to you as a way of thanking you for listening in today. Just stop by winasia.org and receive your copy of Revolution in World Missions. 
Once again, that web address is winasia.org. Here once again is KP with more biblical encouragement to live for what really matters. In Matthew 24, verse 14, Jesus said, And this gospel shall be preached as a witness to the whole world, to all nations, yes, to us, and then the end will come. When was the last time you prayed, saying, Jesus, I'm just tired of waiting. Would you please come back? I want to see you so bad. It's not my choice that I spend a lot of time away from my home. And I have a wife and two children, my son Daniel and my daughter Sarah. But as a family, we made a decision. That's not a joke. It's a real serious. We sat down and talked about it. And the time I get to the airport and board another Lufthansa or British Airways somewhere, going somewhere, and I see my children, and I, in my heart I say, just how to do it again. I don't know where to go. A few times I said to my wife, I, it's just it's a bummer. Why I have to do it? Can somebody else do it? More than once, I complained, murmured, self-pity, and just got discouraged. My wife more than once said, look at me, then I look at her. Her eyes are wet. These are the words she says. When I see you off at the airport with our children, Sarah cries, you don't see much tears in my eyes, but I weep when I come back home. But remember, remember, it is only for a short time. It is worth paying the price. Over two billion people never heard the name Jesus. There's a hell they're heading for. Unless you go, who will go? Unless we pay the price, who will pay the price? Unless we die, who will die? I weep, I agonize, I am sad, but it's worth paying the price. You must go. This time is very short. Eternity is ahead of us. It is worth getting into that next flight. You can go. Telephone calls are expensive. So I leave and every day I call back. Thank God for people like MCI people I can call back. You still have to pay the bill. And I call, hello? Yes. Gisela, it's me. How are you doing? I'm doing great. As the conversation comes to an end, always the same words. I miss you terrible. I miss you bad. I want to see you. Then I say, I want to see you too. I'm so lonely without you. The night I have to hug my pillow. <laughs> oh, the dream, the longing, the emotion, the feelings that rises up thinking about, oh, the ticket is reconfirmed. And I'm going to be heading back to see my wife, my son, my daughter, Ah, what a feeling. How satisfying. When was the last time you said, Lord, I'm so sorry for crying like this, but how long must I wait? I want to see you. You gave your life. Your blood was the price you paid to purchase me. I'm just lonely here as a stranger and pilgrim. I want to see you. When was the last time you prayed? That prayer. There is such an incredible, sinful dichotomy in the life of American Christianity that we say we love him, but we never want to pay the price laying down our life and picking up the cross for the sake of him who left heaven and came here. And now he's lonely and waiting for us to 
Say, Jesus, come back. But he said, I will come back. But one thing has to be done. You live a life. You live a life such a way. You will speed up my coming. You, I mean, I agree. I don't like when people say, you know what? God is in big trouble unless you send your money. We are going to be in trouble. We go off the air. I say, you go off the air. Don't bother me. God is not in trouble. He is not waiting. You know, so you, 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 unless you do something, I'm going to be in big mess. No, no, no. But there's also something we must understand. Those who want to live by grace and say grace alone. But you know what? What do you do with scripture like this? I sought for a man to stand in the gap to make up the difference. So that I will not destroy the land. And I found none. And they are destroyed. Our responsibility. We must live our life such a way that will bring the coming of the Lord closer. And there is a serious responsibility. And that's what I want to tell you about. The serious responsibility is, it is like the harvest time. You know, my people, I am from a home where our people are rice farmers. Harvest time, once a year in our place. And you know what happens when the harvest time comes in American language? My people are like the chicken with the head cut off. Panic time. They aren't talking about a vacation or breakfast or lunch or long sleeping hours or going here and there, seeing friends or visiting relatives. None of those things. It is 24 hours on the go. We have to get the job done. It is panic time. For harvest is a fixed you wait for two weeks, it is destroyed. You know, when I say this war time, it is not peace time. I'm thinking about the verse in Acts 17, verse 6, about those people, the early Christians. They said, wow, they are here also. What a crazy bunch of people. Those who turn the world upside down have come here also. These who turn the world upside down. Philip says, the world revolutionaries have come here also. You and I ought to be such people. They will say, what is wrong with his head? He has gone bananas. He's nuts. He's crazy. Yes. When you and I follow Christ, when people see us, they will say, oh, he's coming. I'm going to take off. Because they know you're going to confront him with your life, with your commitment, with your fasting, with your prayer. When was the last time, mom, your son or your daughter asked, mom, I want to ask you something. How come you don't eat food the, this particular day every week? It's like you pick Tuesday or Wednesday just one week. You just don't eat nothing. Are you sick? Try and lose weight? No, son. It is so that in Afghanistan, 19 million people live there without one church, one missionary, the whole nation on the way to hell. My dear boy, the Lord put up on my heart to pray and fast this day or the week for the sake of those people in Afghanistan. Dad, when was the last time your son said, Dad, why are you like this? let's allow that to probe our hearts, shall we? And encourage us away from selfishness and toward Christ-like living. Well, this has been Road to Reality with Brother K.P. Yohannan, founder and director of Gospel for Asia. Maybe after listening in today, the Lord has moved in your heart and encouraged you to get involved in reaching those that need to hear His good news. Well, one way that you can do that is to support a native missionary through Gospel for Asia. For just $30 a month, you can support a missionary in Asia to help lead others to Christ. And when you sponsor, we'll send you a picture and testimony of your missionary so that you can pray for them. Learn more by visiting our website at winasia.org or simply call us toll-free 1-866-WIN-ASIA. That's 866-WIN-ASIA. And our web address again, winasia.org. 
Next week on The Road to Reality, we'll hear the rest of today's message on taking up our cross and following Christ. Be challenged and refreshed as you join Brother K.P. Yohannan for that next time. Until then, God bless you.